Hey, hello everybody, Disciple here with Overwatch Curios. So, with the Overwatch League starting up, we've seen some pretty insane gameplay from some of the best players in the world. Have you ever watched a pro, either in the league or on a stream, and wondered how they consistently hit ridiculous or difficult shots time after time? Well, practice is the biggest factor in this. Players who have spent hundreds, even thousands of hours playing and perfecting their mouse control and movements will have that control and performance come pretty naturally. However, for aspiring competitors or those just looking to improve and outfrag their friends, having a proper setup, settings, and an understanding of the basics can go a huge way. So with that said, let's take a look at some things every player can work on in order to improve their aim and reach their highest potential. Now, one key technique you'll see a lot of pro players doing is something called mouse flicking. This technique is, to put it simply, the act of immediately flicking your mouse onto a target, hopefully their head, and firing instantly. This technique is super effective with snipers or other single shot characters like McCree and to an extent, even things like Soldier 76's Helix Rocket. You can practice this by going into custom games, or even the shooting range, and positioning your reticle off of a target. Then try to flick it directly onto the head of a target and fire in a split second. Now the functional mechanic and explanation behind this, and exactly how it works, is all based around muscle memory. So as you start to practice this more and more, your accuracy and your speed should both go up, as your brain and your body will begin to understand the exact distance your mouse needs to travel in order to move your reticle from where it is to where you want it to be. Just make sure that you're focusing as well as you can on getting headshots, and that anything that's not a headshot, you kind of consider a miss. Because of this though, you need to remember to go slow at first. When you're first building this knowledge and adding flicking into your gameplay, you really need to focus on accuracy and not speed. It's a lot more important to understand the distance you need to move to accurately hit your shots than it is to try and do it quickly. That element of speed will come over time, so as you continue to practice your flick shots, slowly speed up your practice sessions each time until you're comfortable going for crazy quick flicks. And while I did mention the shooting range, we suggest that you really only use that to warm up and you do your actual practice in custom games with advanced bots. The bots in the shooting range can make for a quick warm-up, but since they move in predictable ways and have such large heads, you can actually develop really sloppy or lazy mechanics that won't translate as accurately to real games as practicing on bots would. Now a cool trick that can help you land more shots against moving targets is something called movement matching, and it's something you can instantly start doing without the fuss of needing to practice the mechanic to perfect it. Movement matching is, as the name would imply, matching the movement of the target you're shooting at. Since you'll usually move at the same speed as your target, if your crosshair is already over them, simply by moving in the same direction as them, you'll hit more shots without needing to constantly adjust your aim as much. Minimizing the need to adjust your mouse to hit shots is super important for your accuracy and just your overall effectiveness for the team. More shots hit means more kills, which should mean more wins for you. Movement matching is one of the most simplistic fundamentals you can add into your play and immediately see results with, and because of this it's one of the best tricks for new players or those who are really looking for ways to quickly improve mechanically. Now if someone is coming straight at you and stutter stepping left and right, I don't mean that you should try and match their left and right movements, since you might actually guess wrong and make it harder for yourself to aim. But what I mean is that if someone is running across your field of view, it might help to actually run along with them while shooting at them instead of just staying solid, planted, and trying to track them with your mouse. Try at least running around a bit while you do your aiming and practice and see if it helps to run along with your target, since I think you guys will actually be pretty surprised and how much it helps. Now, in order to drastically improve your ability to track targets and consistently hit more shots with characters that require solid tracking like Soldier 76 or Tracer, you may need to adjust your sensitivity or your mouse's DPI or even both. When these settings are too high, players often overshoot their target even when making the smallest movements with their mouse. Now at lower sensitivity settings, you effectively make it harder to miss when adjusting your mouse because your reticle will be moving less. This is one of the most important changes you can make to your gameplay if you're playing on a high sensitivity level already. The focus of your play then becomes keeping your reticle at a relative head level for the average height of a hero, and then making small little adjustments to your aim as needed to hit the targets you're already shooting at. 
Having a lower sensitivity can also help you a lot with your muscle memory since you're making a much larger movement for each little bit of aiming. However, this also does mean it'll take a lot of getting used to if you've already been aiming on your current settings for a very long time. But trying to tone down your sensitivity is something I can recommend a ton for hit scan characters where you really need to be able to track. However, if you are a tank player or even a support player, you might want to stick with a high sensitivity since it can actually be really helpful to be able to turn around and do a 360 much more quickly or just aim in the general direction of where you need to go a lot faster. Say for Reinhardt, being able to turn your shield and block the enemy Reinhardt's Earth Shatter is a lot more important than being able to specifically aim at anyone since you can't even hit a headshot. And for someone like Mercy, being able to spin around and use your Guardian Angel or hook up to someone with a heal or a damage boost is a lot more important than pulling out your gun and tracking perfectly on someone's head. Now, while it's a minor note on the subject, it still deserves a mention. Optical mice are much more efficient than laser mice, as the laser sensors in these mice can sometimes be super sensitive and will pick up the smallest things, which can impair the effectiveness of your mouse movements. So if you guys are already going out to get a new mouse, it's something to keep in mind, and I would do your own research on looking up what exactly you might want, especially for your style of play and aim. I don't necessarily have any recommendations myself, since I still don't think I found exactly the right mouse for me. But now, with your newfound appreciation for lower sensitivities, you're probably wondering how exactly you're supposed to transition from target to target in fights, since it feels like you might have to move a lot to actually change your character at all. It's worth considering getting yourself a larger mouse pad. Most high-level players and pro players will use massive mouse pads or even mats, giving them the freedom to move their arms and their mouse without constantly needing to reset its position on the mouse pad. With a larger service to work with, you'll spend less time resetting your position and more time focusing on hitting shots consistently. Now, while some pros might aim with their wrists, it's actually pretty useful if you can learn how to aim with your arm. It cuts down on wrist strain, which can be a serious issue during prolonged gaming sessions, and increases your range of movement by a lot, since you can make rapid 180 turns whenever needed, but also aim very accurately when you are tracking a target. This takes a lot of work to get used to, but it can be so beneficial to your gaming, and if you do practice it a bit, even just in quick play, you can probably start to use it in competitive after maybe just a few days of playing. Using your arm is probably going to feel super weird at first. A lot of players are wrist aimers, meaning they use only their wrist to make adjustments to their mouse, and they generally rest their arm on their desk or their mouse pad. These players are likely to have a hard time adjusting to lower sensitivities due to how difficult it can be to make wide turns or movements with their hand. However, if this is your preferred means of aiming, you can still make wide turns as well. The key is to move your wrist as you're turning, and then quickly replanting or resetting your mouse to its natural position to regain complete control of your aim. Now, developing this skill and making it fluid can take a ton of practice, so don't be discouraged if, as you're making adjustments to your sensitivity as a wrist aimer, you might spend a few matches performing worse than you're used to. Anytime you make adjustments to your sensitivity or DPI, your body will take time to adjust and establish muscle memory with the new changes, as we talked about with earlier flick shots. Give your body and mind time to adjust to the settings before instantly assuming you've made a terrible mistake and that this will make you worse. Remember that any time you play, you're establishing muscle memory and you're establishing the way that you aim. So if you already aim poorly, the more you play that way, the more poorly you're going to aim in the future. But if you actually make active attempts to improve it, then you can learn it very, very quickly as long as you have focus. If you fall back to your old techniques and habits, then you might not see any improvement at all. Another issue that can actually cause a lot of trouble that a lot of players don't even realize is the drag created by the actual cable to your mouse. And at this point, we're kind of looking at specific things that could actually give you a huge boost in game if they do affect you. If your mouse cable runs against the back of your desk or table, gravity naturally creates drag and resistance on your mouse, which can make micro adjustments on your mouse or just make it a lot more difficult to react quickly. To remove this effect from your mouse, consider getting a mouse bungee. The simple tool sits upright on your desk and gives you all of the cable freedom you need to prevent that drag effect from happening. Now, if you're unable to invest in a bungee immediately but think cable drag may be dragging you down, consider some creative options like placing your mouse cable underneath the leg of your monitor or in some other way pulling the cable off the back of your desk. 
The most important thing to keep in mind is that wherever you place it, this will be the new anchor point for your mouse, so make sure it's at least level with your desk if not higher, and that you give yourself more cable than you would ever need for you to travel to the furthest edge of your mouse pad, or else you might get stuck and not be able to turn anymore. This simple trick removes pretty much any drag from your aiming and makes your mouse movements more precise. Now we mentioned it briefly earlier, but it's important when practicing your aim to practice on other players. As stated, the bots in the shooting range move in predictable paths and have large hitboxes. Meanwhile, players move in much more unpredictable manners and at different speeds. They also stop, fire back, and put you in real scenarios so that you can develop your skills in the environment in which they'll be used. We always suggest warming up with a few quick play games before entering competitive queue. That way your mind adjusts and gets used to all the movements and actions it will need to take in a match. Well, as always, if you guys enjoyed the video or feel like you learned even one new thing, I'd love it if you drop a like on the video and make sure you subscribe for future content if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching our videos. We really love talking about Overwatch and we're going to keep doing so for a very long time. So stay tuned for the next one and until then, peace. Thank <laughs> you.